Well, hello there, my friends. This is Gary J. White, the founder of Wake Up Warrior, and I'm here with my beautiful wife, the founder of DKW Styling. There she is. Say something to everyone. Hello. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday, Saturday it's but it's not their Saturday. It, I need you to pick that microphone you know and put what? it right by your it's mouth. It's not their Saturday, but it is date night for us, and it's we don't normally do this podcast on an actual date night. No, we do not. But tonight we are, so it's going to feel very authentic. It's going to feel like we're actually going on a date night. Welcome to our date night. Welcome to date night with the <laughs> wives here at Date Your Wife, the podcast. Now, if you are here, let me give you a little rundown. As I said, I am the founder of Wake Up Warrior and also the author of this book that you see right here in the video, Warrior Book, which 10,000, now almost over 11,000 men in 27 countries have invested in this book as a resource. You can check it out at warriorbook.com. If the information inside here inside of this podcast is inspiring to you as a man, we'd invite you to join us in our brotherhood globally by heading to warriorbook.com. Now, on top of this, on top of this, this conversation here as a couple Here inside the Date Wife podcast is really about having a conversation about being a producer and inside of being a producer, how that topic works out in the conversation of marriage. Are you trying to run a live stream? I'm trying to do a live video, but I don't have a stand. All right, let me see it. You just put it right here. You just put it right here. I'm going to put a live right there. I was like, how do you get that to stand up? There you go. You're the focus of the show. Well, I'm going to turn this right here. We're going to actually do it on a water bottle. There, there you, go. you go. It is time Welcome for date, date night, night. The star date night. of the show. <laughs> okay. So, okay. anyways, we're here and uh, we're here on Date Your Wife the podcast. It is date night for us both officially. But my wife is going to give us a little rundown on why we are doing this show. You always ask me that every well, time. Well, every every week you come up with a lame answer. I'm hoping that episode number 14, which I believe it's we are. It's always the same answer. Well, we're, I, we're we're we have new sh- listeners. Okay, give them the answer. So we are doing this show because we are awesome. Holy shit, that's the worst <laughs> answer of all time. Are you serious okay. right now? Okay, no. That's th- all you got? We, we, we are awesome. Okay, you no. should listen to our show. <laughs> Try again. Okay, so the reason we're doing this show is we are both entrepreneurs, and we are both parents. We have two little girls, and... And a boy. And uh, I have a stepson. And, and a boy. And, and a he, boy. And he lives with us. Put that microphone right your up on deal? your mouth. This mic is you're like in like my half, face. You're kind of like, like half micing it. Do you want the other mic? <laughs> I feel like I'm so loud. I okay, feel like I'm all right. I'm just making sure. Podcast. I'm just making sure because I feel like you're being nervous. So, anyways, about you this. you interrupted me. Okay, continue to go. Our, so, you're giving us a purpose about okay, this show. We're our, entrepreneurs. Purpose, we have children. The go. purpose of this show is just like we are not marriage counselors. We don't claim to be marriage counselors. Nope. We are just kind of sharing life as it is as a married couple and with kids, running businesses, and life in general. And so, we've gotten a ton of positive feedback. People are like, I love that you keep it so real. I get something out of it every show. So if you're new to this show, go into it with the mindset of like, hey, this is a this is a fun time and I may learn something or I might just get a good laugh. But either way, hopefully you find some value or entertainment out of this every week. So, yes, we are not therapists. No, <laughs> we're not. Nope. Sorry, 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 sorry. If you're watching the show and you're thinking, I'll bet this guy is a marriage therapist. He is not. You would be inaccurate, my no. friend. I actually have a degree in PE. Uh, <laughs> they say Jack Black said that, uh, you know, if you can't do, you teach. And if you can't teach, then you teach PE. Hence where I am. Now, over the last 15 years, what we do have is 15 years of being married. We have 15 years of up and downs. We have uh, three years we call the dark years where divorce was knocking. And this would have been divorce number two for me, divorce number one for Danielle. Are you are you I'm taking just, yeah, I just wanted to give him a sneak peek. Just a little bye, sneak peek. All right, you see you guys later. Uh, an episode on my blog. Bye. All right, bye bye. Okay, so the live streams are over. All right. So anyways, in inside of this, we were hunting down and searching for the possibility of connection. And we found it. And so our goal our goal here is to really start to share with you concepts and ideas around the following topics. Week number one, every single month we're gonna talk about sex. We did that last week. We also then after that gonna follow with the topic of money, which we're gonna talk about today. And then we move to the conversation of parenting, which we'll do next week. And then we move to the conversation of communication, which is the last week. And then we start all over again with sex. Inevitably, we bring up sex every time because Danielle cannot not talk about sex. That's it. Bambi, Bambi blinking. That's all we get. (laughs) Some Bambi blinking. (laughs) Okay, so we're going to start our show off. You have a blog post you're going to read for us. You want me to read that right now? I want you to to read it. Why don't you introduce the topic? Okay, the topic topic. today is money. While my wife pulls up her blog post at dkwstyling.com. I always want to sing that. 
Money, 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 what money. Song is that? What money. Song is that? All right. Is Anyways, okay. uh, I'm going to set the frame. You hurry up and find your blog post. So it. here's the deal. Our, our conversation today is money matters. Like as a married couple, My money life. matters. And when it comes to dating your wife, money matters. And when it comes to creating a life that you could ultimately love in the Have It All Lifestyle, again, brought to you inside of this beautiful book known as Warrior Book, found at warriorbook.com. Inside of all of that, here's what I can tell you. Money is a difference maker. And also, it has a huge impact on your relationship. Garrett and I have gone through ups and downs. We've gone through periods of, like, nearly bankrupt, losing it all, selling shit to just, like, put food on the table. And, like, money is a big deal. When that is a stress in your relationship and in your life, you can't say, like, well, we just love each other and that's all that matters. That's that's fucking bullshit. Well, here's the deal. I think this is our very first point. Our very first point inside of this is that, that that men have to come to grips with the following. When you don't produce, and by the way, I'm not talking about a specific amount of money because everybody's in a different place. What I can tell you is as a man, if you do not produce, you bring chaos on your relationship. Why? Why is this? I think that women genuinely want to be kind of taken care of. Like, they want their man to be the man, and even if they can produce, they want to be taken care of, in my experience. You have a lot of experience in this. You've experienced me when I'm producing. You've well, experienced me when I'm I not producing. Know, What's like, the difference? I just know that, like, in our relationship, we had ups and downs, and when, when like, we were trying to figure stuff out, that's actually when I launched my brand and, and started taking my career as a stylist serious and stopped thinking it as a hobby, and when I did that... Um, it was like I figured out how to produce on my own, but I still, there was something missing in our relationship. And I always like, I would look at Garrett and I was like, oh my God, like fucking wake up. And I realized what I wanted is I, even though I could produce for myself, I just wanted to be taken care of. I wanted my man to be the man. This is that's a tough, weird. this, be the, be the man. Well, it's, I, <laughs> oh, I don't have that, that book, book here. That's Warrior Book. We, <laughs> be the man is a copy they get when they come purchase Warrior Book, found at warriorbook.com. Yep. There is a shameless promotion again. So here, here's the thing. Like. I had a really hard time as a man with this situation because I felt like an ATM. We've talked about this in other episodes. And the funny part was when I was producing, and by the way, I've had all kinds of different levels of production. I've had levels of production that were big to me that now are the amount I, I may spend in a day. And you just turned down my headphones. Oh, what are you do doing? I, I, you sound so loud. I'm trying to turn down mine. So you, I, it's here's like hurting. yours. It's, is this one yours? Yeah. Which one's mine? No. Hello. I know that one's mine. All right. <laughs> this one's yours. This Sorry. is one yours. Yeah. There that, we go. Are you? Oh, I feel now? better. They're there. It, mine was so loud. Is that good now? I broke your flow, but you're good though. Sorry. Yeah. I'm you good. completely broke my flow. Sorry. I was literally like, I was literally like, going deaf. Uh, yeah. I was like, oh my god, I can't hear. Okay, keep going. You could hear. It was just very loud. It was so much hearing. Yes. Okay, so anyways, now she's broken my frame. Oh. I'm going to come back to uh, remember where I was. All right, so anyways, <laughs> in, inside, of, inside of this game of being up and down, though, it doesn't matter how much money it is, but here's what I found. A man feels different about himself when he produces than when he is not he getting it done. He feels more like a man. He does feel more even like a man. Even I would guarantee you men that are maybe even born into money, there's this like sense of like, no, I want to get it done on my own. Why? Because you want to be the fucking man. And yep. that's more attractive to women. You're passionate about this. I am. Because so talk to it, me about how unattractive I became when I was unable to get it done. Not for it's sure. Not even, like it's a, not even about like, like what my point I was trying to make is like, say you marry a guy that has a lot of money. Like it's more sexy to a woman if you actually are the man that's producing behind the money. And I think okay. that even guys get why that. Is this? Why, is this, why is this a sexy thing for you? Just because it's why like. Why do you probably get say like, it's like, hey, this it's, matters. It's like the sense of you're taking care of me. Like, you are taking care of me, not your mom or your dad taking care of me. You are taking care of me. You know what I mean? Is this like a want to want to wish the dishes? Want to want to wish want to the want dishes? Want to want to wash the dishes? No, dishes? it's not. What I mean it's by not. that is I like. I just explaining, expressing like an energy. And I think that if okay. men work for their success in life, that is what is sexy. So. Okay. So, and, and included with this is the topic of money. Right. And making money actually matters because to a man, when you make enough money to pay your bills, when you make enough money to take care of your family, when you make enough money to take your wife on a date night, which, by the way, it doesn't matter how much money you make, you yeah. can afford a date night. Yeah. When you make enough money to put your family in abundance, there is a shift in the way that you see yourself as a man. And this shift in how you see yourself as a man ultimately has an impact on the way that you see your relationship 
and also affects the way that your wife sees you. Now, you, you know, know it's interesting. I ahead. remember when you first started the Wake Up Warrior brand, and we didn't, we didn't, we had practically nothing, but date night was still a priority to us. And I remember what you would like hashtag or title. You'd be like, "Don't be a cheap bastard. T- date your wife." And I was like, "That's so weird. Why would you say that?" But for us at the time, it was a big deal to like find it, pay for a babysitter to actually go out and have dinner like we didn't have a ton of money so for you i think the fact that you were like saying like don't be a cheap bastard because it was a big deal so when garrett says like it doesn't matter what your income is or whatever like it 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 genuinely it doesn't like that's that's important i was making investments in our relationship and those investments have always been at different levels they've done all all that ends up changing is brand names trips that you take and things like this like that, that maybe hey, the zip codes that you live in. I should share my blog post. You want to share your blog post? You ready? Well, you just took a big drink of water. This means you're actually Ooh, ready, ready to read. You no, ready to because, do this? Because I think that the more success you have, I, okay. what I find in people that have a lot of success, and even even people I work with, they start buying bougie things. And if you don't know bougie is, I'll explain in my blog post. But they'll start buying nicer things, and they feel this guilt for being showy or buying nice things. So I was like, I'm going to write a big, I'm going to write not a big, but I'm going to write a little blog, write a blog post, post on this. Are you ready so, to read this blog post? I'm ready. Okay. okay, here we here go. We go. Here this we is a go. blog post. This is this was this week's okay. blog post. Yes, TGIF okay. ladies. It what was date was this published? It was Friday the thirteenth. Friday the thirteenth. Friday 13th. the thirteenth, oh. which means it was a, a lucky or scary post. Either way. All right, here we give go. it to us. Okay, so much good content on the blog this week. Okay, you don't need to read that. Let me just jump over to this. <laughs> I currently only work two days behind the chair at my salon, and I only cater to sixty six to eight MBR ex- hair extension clients per week. I genuinely own. I genuinely. I. I. Sorry, I cannot see or read tonight. I generally only work on people I enjoy being around. If you read Monday's post, I talk about creating your own story, specific specifically for stylists. You choose who you want to work on and who you want to work with. Anyways, I had to laugh yesterday as a client asked me what is bougie on my latest YouTube video on how to blow dry hair extensions. I referenced my favorite blow dryer as being bougie. I said, you know, high maintenance. Then I had to correct myself because I always think of high maintenance as a bad thing. But I take bougie as a compliment. To me, it just means I like nice things. Enjoying the experience, enjoy, enjoying experiencing more in life doesn't define me or does it. In my experience, I always strive for improvement and growth. In fact, I crave it. Once you catch the bug, it's hard to settle. We fall back into our old stories of who we once were or what we once had. We care too much about what people think about us at our current level, and this makes us uncomfortable with growth. This is because we outgrow those around us. With growth comes the opportunity to experience life at a new level. So yes, I like nice hair, I like nice clothes, I like nice shoes, I like nice homes, and I like fun trips. So maybe experiencing more in life does define us. I try to keep it real on my blog posts and videos. I enjoy working hard and creating success in my life while genuinely care, still caring for others. For me, this is more fulfilling in the end. Don't get me wrong. I will buy nice blow dryers, the best of cars, the best of hair, because I'm always striving to be to be more. And with and and with that comes experiencing more. Be you at every level. That was beautiful. Yeah, I, I was. I liked it. Any I thoughts was, you want to add to that? Well, what I was saying is like it's so funny because like the more you experience in life, you're like, oh my god, maybe I should hide this. And like I get it. There's some tact in what you should like like overly share and whatever but right. for me i'm like no i want to be me at every level i want to experience more i want to share more and i don't know i think if you go in, into things and money and success with that attitude it's not necessarily a bad thing and it's not something that you should you need to like feel ashamed of or feel guilty of i think that guilt is always the enemy now i'm not saying like you have to go out and be like look at me look at me look at me but but at the same time, it's okay to share the success that you're having because I, in a way, like I said, like, does it define you? It kind of does because for me, it's like I experience more in life. Right. So that but was, this that was hard, all I was This is a hard principle that people get to is that like they'll look and they'll say, well, you know, money doesn't really matter. And I said, well, that's like saying oxygen doesn't really matter. Like the reality is as a married man, money matters. Like it does. And money matters. It matters to pay for braces. It matters to pay for trips. It matters to pay for mortgages. It matters to pay for insurance. It matters to pay for health insurance. It matters to pay for cars. It matters to pay for school. It matters to pay for the future weddings of your daughters. It matters to pay for your retirement. It matters across the board. Like money fucking matters. Here's a crazy piece though. There are so many couples in which the man and the woman have not gotten together on the same page to actually agree to the following, which is money actually matters. 
And it doesn't matter what your level of abundance is versus scarcity. Scarcity is there's not enough. Listen, there's people that we know. They make millions of dollars a year. They live in scarcity. They mm-hmm. still don't make enough because they spend so damn much. And then you've got individuals that make a couple thousand a month who live in abundance. And they live in an environment, a situation in which they're able to experience beauty around them. But here's the crazy part that keeps people stuck. Money doesn't actually define you as an individual or couple. Being okay with making money and being okay with the idea that money actually matters is a significant shift in you two as a couple in seeing the future of your family. Because your economic growth and your spiritual growth and your financial growth and your emotional growth and your physical growth with each other, your sexual growth with each other, the connection leadership you have with your children, all of this has a place it needs to go. And so in the end, money actually matters. But at each level, we get stuck in this new devil, which is this idea of being okay with where we are. Exactly. And this, this becomes a stagnant piece to grow. Be you at every level. Okay, expand and this. Also, be, expand and this also idea. And also be okay with like letting go. I think that there's this this place in that we we need to justify with those around us. Like, oh, it's, you know, it's whatever. And it's like, it's the energy you put off. Like, just accept, like, you don't have to be braggy. You don't have to be showy. But just accept where you're at and be you. <laughs> you can be an asshole with five bucks. You can be an asshole with five Yes, million. and that's what's so funny. It doesn't like, really matter. You can be an asshole get, either way. People are like, well, you're an asshole. And you're like, everybody's an asshole. I was an asshole when I had nothing. So fuck you. I'm an asshole at every level. And I'm also a decent person at every level. So it's not like I we are we become assholes at each new level. It's just, it's like... A new version, a new, a new version. version comes out. It's, it's just human, like in marriage. It's human nature to have an asshole in you. It's what you do with that asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I want to quote the greatest quote of all time on this show. It's human nature to have an asshole. It's in you. This is what. This is what. It's what you do with your asshole. You or do you eliminate? Them? Oh, Sorry. it's what you do with the asshole. Sometimes they say stuff, and I'm like, did I say that? You That's did fun. say that. Good for me. Well done. <laughs> You guys got it, right? You guys, you guys got, got it. it. <laughs> All right, so let's come back here on this uh, this idea of that. So here, here's a piece we're gonna it's we're so gonna connect to. It's not that cold. Chill out. Okay. Oh, literally chill. Out. You hear that? <laughs> that was about as brilliant as your asshole comment. Okay. So <laughs> he, here's the thing: inside of our relationships, money sits at the core. Like it, uh, it allows you to do so much shit, or it constrains you to do so much uh, shit as a couple. Right. And so I hear people tell me. As we have built and lost, and then we rebuilt our empires again, and one of the things inside of it that people say is they will make comments, and there are two kinds of people. There are people who will make stabbing remarks Mm. to us as we've grown as a couple financially, and at the same time, interestingly enough, these were the same people who were actually didn't say shit to us when we had nothing. Fucking dicks. So they've kind of been assholes to us at the (laughs) bottom, and they've been assholes to us as we've climbed up the mountain a little bit further. So here's a question for you. How right. Daniel, how do you how do you manage this this growth factor knowing that economically this changes friendships, it changes mm-hmm. uh organizations, you know it changes it's society, hard. neighborhoods, it changes hard, everything. It's hard for me to connect with people. I think there was like a 5-year span that we were growing so rapidly that I disconnected from people. And I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing, but I literally it's it's like I saw kind of where we were going not only that saw it but i like saw the increase each year that both of our companies were having and i just i kind of um guarded myself and i Mm -hmm. didn't come as connected and i would just become kind of like surface social and i was just very guarded i think and now i'm finally at a place where i'm like ah okay i can't really i can just i can be friends with everybody no matter what level they're at it doesn't really matter i just have to be comfortable with me well done this comfortable with me thing is a lot easier than it sounds, though. I know. And most individuals are not actually comfortable with themselves. You know, we have a lot of friends who have, who create a lot of success inside a business. And the crazy part about it is to watch. We have two groups of friends. We have friends of ours who are uh, who celebrate their success and use it as a tool to inspire other people that they can create more. And then we have others who simply hide it all. Mm-hmm. They pretend. Like the worst part is when you're with people who've created financial success and then they pretend like they're broke. And this is magnifies. Maybe they this. are in their mind. They are broke in their mind. And this is, this is what I want to tell you is that the money itself, when money matters, what the problem why I believe most people don't actually pursue money, particularly individuals in marriage, don't get on the same page and say, we are as a couple are going to go after this economic target, is because the money itself doesn't make you. The money magnifies you. At the same time, the money becomes the result or the evidence that value is created, which means you as an individual and as a couple have gotten better 
at producing economics and producing value when the fruit shows up. But it doesn't actually make you anything. Money is a result and mirrors back to you who you actually have become. And so as you look at this, a lot of individuals stay stuck in this and a lot of couples stay stuck in this and they battle about it sometimes because one person wants to grow economically and the other person is okay with being where they are. You've seen this? All the time. Talk to me about this dilemma. This is quite the dilemma. You have a man who doesn't want to grow, but you have a woman who wants more. You have a man who wants more, but a woman doesn't want to grow. I've seen both equations. You talked to this from the female side. I'm going to talk about this from the man's side. Because there was a part, you remember, let's give him a speech. You remember sitting in the (laughs) the living room or in the kitchen? No. In 2009, I had my first W-2 job after being an entrepreneur Uh. my first run. And I was making $10,000 a month. I was taking home $7,300 or something W-2. But my, when the CEO of the company that I was working for handed me the check, he looked at me and he said, I need you to sit down. It was a two-week check. It was like $3,200. Now, it may be a lot of money for you, but I had come so from a cold. place where we were making... Are you freezing? I'm so you're cold. You're such a I can't baby. even... I don't even know if I can get through this show. I'm so cold. All right. I'm going to go turn off the AC and you're going to talk. I'll turn off the AC. You, you talk. You're nope, already in a flow. Nope. You talk. I already have my headphones You on. don't even know how to turn off the AC. Do you know how to do this? You know how to do this? You're literally freezing. Oh, my God. She can't even focus. All right. So anyway, so we're sitting there in the kitchen. Okay. I work for my friend. Um, I had been an entrepreneur and run my own companies. And then I failed at running those companies. And then I lost all my companies. And I lost all my money. And I lost all my employees. I lost everything. So there I am, 2009, uh, eight, and actually 2009, I'm working for a friend of mine. His name is Chris Crown. We'll be forever grateful for him. He actually built a, a company. I believe it was called Strongbrook. I don't know what it's called now. You know, I haven't talked to Chris in probably like eight years. But nonetheless, like back back then, Chris uh, Chris gave me a job. He said I was his uh, his his uh, business partner, but the truth was I was his employee, which I'm okay with. Um, he came in at a time that was super crucial for me. I didn't have enough belief in myself. I was I had lost everything, and he came to me and he said, "Hey, listen, I'm going to give you this job, and I'm pay you ten thousand dollars a month." I said, "Okay." So then I sit down I with a guy so named pissed. Steve Earl. Uh, you were pissed I took the job? I was so pissed. Really? You were? Yeah. I didn't know you were I pissed I took the job. I told you that on so many walks. You like, did? Yes. We'd go walking and I was like, I think because I looked at Chris and I was like, you're so much, you, you don't, you, like you're such a better trainer and you're not giving yourself credit for who you are. And it was like hard for me to see that that you were at this place where I was at I was at a very vulnerable place I was terrified as a husband and a producer I was like oh I was like no I was like you think you're helping us but I was bugged I was bugged you were bugged by it were you bugged by Chris or were you just bugged by me I probably just bugged at you but I was just I don't think it was Chris I think it was more like you were bugged that I sold out I I was bugged at Chris because I was like I think he knew that he you were better, but he liked that he was above in the rankings. And so well, that, at that me point too. in the game, guess what? He was up in the rankings. I know, and that's what bugged me. So, so anyways, I was like, I was, I deserved I just was to be always his like, meh. So, anyways. All right, well, on. I'm going to come back to the story. I was actually grateful for Chris. Obviously, Danielle has different feelings about this, but nonetheless, I was grateful. But here was a catch 22 that came in. So he gave me the check. And it was $3,200 or something like that after tax for two weeks. And, and I was like, holy shit. Like we used to spend thirty two hundred dollars in a weekend, like on <laughs> Ironman bike shit. Like I had, I had lived in money for um for about five to six years as a businessman, and we had, I we'd gotten accustomed to a certain lifestyle. And people would give a shit at it as we lost everything. Or like, well, you should have lived in your means. I was like, fuck you. Like we were not only <laughs> living in our means, but when your means disappear, it doesn't matter how much your means. Like you can't live within means if you have no means. Like, if you have no means and your means end, then it doesn't matter. You could be 5000 a month in bills or you could be 500000 a month in bills. It doesn't matter. If you lose your capacity in that case to make money, your world starts to fall apart. So I was grateful. I was grateful that Chris gave me the opportunity. Like, literally, it was a very spiritual moment for me. It was a very opening time for me. It was a very crucial time for me. And he gave me opportunity to do things in his organization that I needed to be able to do. And honestly, I needed a time to be able to just focus on someone else. I could sell Chris and I could sell what he was doing, but I was so out of my mind in lacking confidence in myself because we had gotten so fucking beat down over 18 months to two years and when my businesses fell apart. So I'm sitting there and I come back to Danielle and Danielle and I get in a fight in the kitchen. You remember this fight in the kitchen? I don't. There's so many fights in the kitchen. Oh my God. You remember (laughs) the fight in the kitchen. I was over the check. And you were sitting there with me, and I was getting irritated because I felt like I was like, fuck, at least we got some money to pay. Our bills were like 25000 a month, so obviously we weren't paying our bills. 
And I, I was making like 7,200 take home every month. I so think, obviously that I was not enough. I think I was enough. bugged because I was like, what you're doing for him, you could like package and relaunch as your own and make six times as much. But I didn't have the confidence to do it. Like I, I literally, that. I, I literally, that. And that was such a turn. I literally for me. didn't have the confidence to do it because I, I was trying to rebuild our lives. I was paranoid to I just know. put groceries on the table. Well, and I was like, well, I'm just gonna sit tight. It was, it was just, a, uh, it, was it was a sticky a rough place time. to be in it as a rough. wife. When like you look at your man and you're like, you're capable of so much more, but then you can't be like that nagging, nagging wife. That's like, what the fuck? Like, we were really <laughs> nagging. We just started drifting. Um, yeah, like I think that's talking. when I, like, well, no, because I and was like. And you started building your own business. I just was like, I need to be patient. And then amongst being patient, I was like, I need to stop worrying about him. And why, like, I can't put all this pressure on him. What could, what could I do? And that's, I kind of flipped it and I decided to take a good look at myself, which in turn, I think it definitely is actually what made our relationship what it is today and why we are still together. Because instead of waiting for Garrett, I decided to look at myself. And through doing that, we both rose. So we're coming back to the kitchen. All right, kitchen. All right, so we're in the kitchen. Danielle, I remember because there were a lot of fights in the kitchen. Lots of kitchens. So we're sitting in the kitchen. Danielle's standing in the kitchen. I'm standing in the kitchen. I'm very frustrated about the situation. I'm very grateful to Chris. I'm very grateful for the job. I'm very grateful. At the same time, I'm super fucking frustrated because I feel like I'm this like Uber producer. Like when I had begun my business as Chris was in college. And like I I just I felt frustrated about the situation I was in, not because of the company I was working for. I just felt frustrated because of the situation I was in. Okay, and on with the fight. What was the kitchen? I'm waiting, waiting. What are you waiting for? What was the kitchen? You fight? don't even remember what the fight I is. I know. I, so like, then you so get to sit back. Up. Exactly. Okay. Because okay, that's going. how I tell stories. Here's how you tell stories. Point A to point B. There was a fight in the kitchen. It was not fun. By the end. All right. Keep Bad going. storyteller. All keep right. Going. Back to the story. So anyways, and by the way, you've given us like nine interruptions in today's show. You've broken my frame like three times. But you're so beautiful. You know, I you just want to be a part of the show. Looking. You are part of the show. <laughs> okay, keep going. You read your whole blog post. Keep going. All right. So anyways, we're in the kitchen, and I look at Danielle, and I'm super irritated. And she says she makes a comment about me not making enough money. And I freak out. And I'm like yelling at her. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Do you know how many families would die to have the kind of money that I'm able to bring home right now in today's marketplace and you're sitting there, you ungrateful bitch, what's wrong with you, da 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 and I go off. Now, Danielle responds to me. Do you remember what you said? I don't even remember this fight. Okay, well, I do remember this okay, fight. It was a pivotal moment. It was a pivotal what moment I, what to it, me. What happened? Danielle then looks at me and, sa and says the following, and I quote. Oh, I actually paraphrase. Quote. I don't know if I quote. I actually paraphrase. Okay, I was like, that's I paraphrase, strong. quote. Okay. She says, listen, I don't know what world you come from, oh. but $10,000 a month is my floor not my ceiling. You can do more, and it's bullshit. I do remember saying something you remember along this? the lines of like, this should be, this is this is not like, I remember saying you something remember this? like, this, is the, this isn't your, this, is what, my, this, this is isn't what you should be reaching for, this is just where we're at. This is like, we're at the bottom of the bucket right now, so stop giving me, telling me how I should feel grateful for feeling at the bottom of the bucket. It was a, <laughs> it was a rough moment. It was a rough moment, and it obviously it had a big effect on me. Because I'm sitting there and I I freak I out. I think you settled. I'm like, I think what you a settled in. Bitch. I think you settled into like, which I think honestly there has to be this balance in producing where you have to sit back and feel kind of grateful for where you're at. You have to feel yes. this gratitude of yes. like I'm I'm so excited to, or I'm grateful that I have this. And I think you are in this place of like. Okay, I'd moved past I, gratitude. Well, I know. I think you had settled because it wasn't like I'm just grateful. And it, here's what I, the point I'm trying to make. It wasn't like you were like, I'm grateful and this is what it is. Or I'm grateful for this, but we're moving past this. It was almost like your energy was like, I'm, we're, this is, this is, this could be life forever and you need to be grateful for it. And I think that's why I got so pissed because yes. I was like, fuck you. You're capable of more and so am I. Well, would you like the rest of the story? And so I mean, that's you're, and where, you're, so even though when I said yes. that, I'm sure at some level I was looking at myself like, okay, if this is if this you is you were where, thinking about yourself too. Well, I think at this point, I've, if I'm like, okay, if if he's settling into this, I'm I'm not okay with that. And it probably was a moment where I was like, okay, well, th if this is where this if this is the top of the bucket for you, this is not for me, and I'm gonna go find some way to produce for myself. So the reality was what Danielle was saying was not even about money. It was settling. Like, you got to remember, yeah. I had given her a lifestyle before that for five to six years. It wasn't like that was, like, the highest we'd ever been. Like, we had gone from 
top of the mountain to bottom of the mountain. And although $10,000 a month in salary or a, you know W-2 income may seem like a lot to you, which it could be, I don't know what your situation is, to where we were, that was not enough to pay our bills. Our bills were 25000 a month at the time. And again, you're like, oh my God, I can't imagine 25000 a month. Well, when you're, making, when you're making hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and you're bringing home millions of dollars in your businesses and all, like it's all relative, it's all relative. So here's the thing that happens though. Less than two weeks later, I'm driving around the point of the mountain. We lived in Utah at the time. I'm driving around the point of the mountain and I accepted another check for $3,200. <clears throat> and I'm driving around and Danielle's voice comes into my mind. And I recognize that I have literally sold out. Like my heart was starting to shut down. My vision was starting to shut down. Who I was, it was, I was supposed to be with Chris for six months. Because you were like driving thinking like, am I going to do this for the rest of my life kind of I was like, I'm going to be, I'm going to become like Bob. You know, I'm like, I go to, you know what's, go to work, you know what's come so funny? home, hate my fucking life. Do you know what's so funny? What? At, at every level there are, there, I think this is why like I'm kind of addicted to like, growth and figuring out more in life because I there's always a point no matter what level we're at where I'll be driving to work that same level and I'm like this is it is this 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 is the road I'm going to drive on for the rest of my life and it freaks me out it's a little stressful huh and I and it happens every level even like a couple weeks ago I was driving to the salon and I was like oh my god am I going to be right driving on PCH this is when it. you're 65 this is it this is it. and I freaked out and we're having so much abundance in our life and I literally was like Oh my God, no. And I was like, okay, what can I do? What do I need to like revamp my business? What do I need to do? I like freaked out. But you weren't freaking out because of money. You were freaking no. out because of the, the I idea like of I not settling. growing, right? Yes. And I felt like I okay. was like, I can't do, I can't, do, I can't drive PCH for the rest of my life. I cannot. <laughs> I could drive PCH for the rest of my life. I could, but I'm using it as a parable. Yeah, Come I on, totally get what me. you're saying. Okay. I am following with the parable. Like, so. <laughs> The the I okay so the PCH or I knew I could not drive the I five or is no, it I five that's or I even, man, I fifteen God, that's I fifteen bad. in Utah no, right I, just I cannot drive the, the I fifteen around the point of the mountain <laughs> to Utah Valley the rest of my life no. and I remember sitting there and I'm driving I pull off to the side of the road as a man I realize that my life is like in the balance right now there's a decision that has to be made everything in my soul says you must fucking leap. You've got to let go of this. You are starting to become addicted to the paycheck. You're starting to get used to and settling in. I'm starting to sell out, and in my sellout, I'm starting to die. I was an uncaged lion that was now pretending in the circus that I was okay doing tricks at 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and 7 o'clock shows. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. I turn back around in my car. I drive back to the office. I tell Chris and his partner, Steve, Thank you. I hug both of them. I hand the checks back for the last pay period. I remember period. when you told me you handed back. I'm like, why don't you just and keep them? And I said, them? I <laughs> cannot accept these checks. I have to go, go on. I am so grateful for the opportunity that you created for me. Thank you for believing in me. They both looked at me and said, listen, we knew you were only going to be here for a short period of time. We're so grateful to have had you here. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for who you've been. Thank you for your contributions to organization. I gave them both a hug and I pulled away. You remember when I did this? Yeah, and I think I was bugged. I was like, well, you worked for the money. Why don't you just keep the money? <laughs> and I was like, but I think for no, you. No, I had to go. I, I couldn't keep the like money. I couldn't thing. keep it. Yeah, you were it was like, an it's energetic thing. Yeah, you were like, it's, it's done. Like, I'm done. Then the next uh, 2009 to 2010 to 2011, I tried like 12 things. And I was part of like a whole bunch of organizations. I was strategic you partners always, with a bunch of people. Remember, I tried so much shit. Do you remember you always had partners? And always, I was like, always had why does he think he needs a partner? Because and I, I didn't believe. I know. I didn't believe. I know. And I, real, I remember the year you finally were like, you came to me and you're like, I had partners because I wasn't confident in my skill set or I didn't believe in myself enough. And so I thought if I had a partner, it was like 50-50 risk. And I and I felt like I always believed, and I think I was like irritated that you didn't see that, but that was just you, from an you outside. You could see it for years before I could. I fucking married you because of that. I Whoa. remember. I remember like Touché. literally people were you, you were going to college <laughs> to be a high school teacher and a football coach, and I mean I was a hairstylist, and I think I would people you were like to be honest, I was eighteen when I met Garrett. Not to be honest, I don't know why I said that, but I was eighteen when I met Garrett. He was she was 20, gonna lie and tell you she was I like actually say, 17. If you listen to our podcast <laughs> for some reason I'm always like if I'm being honest, I don't know why I say that. It's like when I'm about to share something that I don't normally sh normally share. But anyways, I was eighteen when I met Garrett and he was twenty five 
and I was like new going to college, like the cute girl, date whoever I wanted. And yeah. I saw Garrett and he was 25. And then I find out he's married, been divorced, has a kid. And I remember people like just the back home thinking like, why are you going for this guy? Like, what do you see in this guy? Like what you could you could go date whoever you wanted. And what which is true. You could date a lot of guys who are good looking guys. And I did. You and did? I did. But I kept like being like very attracted to you. And I saw I think I saw and I'm sure this goes for a lot of women. It's like you see your guy for who he is. And but not only that, but who he could become. And so, like, I, t- I remember telling my parents, like, sitting down, they're like, well, why are you dating? I mean, if you want to date him and you want to marry him, like, we will support that. But, like, Danielle, and I'm like, it doesn't matter if Garrett is going to be a high school coach. I have no doubt that he will go on to, like, coach collegiate level and be, like, the top in his career. Like, he's just that man. And I think I saw that from the beginning. And so when you were selling out or when you were selling short i was just so pissed because i was like fucking a like (laughs) i I was like come on i saw this in you but i also believe like that's i when i first meet people i see like their greatness in a way and so i get irritated when they settle for less and that's what i was doing like it actually was terrifying to me i had never um I don't think it's wrong. I don't think it's wrong. Collect a paycheck. I just for who I was, um, I I was terrified. Like I was terrified that I had actually gotten comfortable with this. I'd gotten very comfortable. If you're listening to this show and you're a man, or you're a woman that's married to a man who has sold out like this, and there are so many men who have sold out. Like they literally just stopped growing. And you know why they do it? They do it for the same reason my father did because they're terrified. They're terrified to try something new. They're terrified to take a leap. They're terrified to bank on themselves, particularly when yeah. they've got children and bills to pay and Scary. groceries. It's terrifying. It's why my father. Yeah, my dad told me that. Like my dad had so many skills as a salesman. My dad, like commission wise, would have made 150, 200 thousand a year, many years throughout our whole lives growing up. But he was so scared he stayed right. on salary, and inside of his salary he made like 35,000, 38,000 right. dollars a year. Yet his sales would have easily produced this, and it took years. He eventually launched his own company. And like quadrupled the amount of income that he made while we were growing you, up and made it as an adult after the kids basically moved out of the house. I think that people play it safe in life in fear of failure. And so they they just say, well, if I leap and I fall on my face, then there's consequences. But if I just stay in the safe zone, then I can just like ride this out forever. So here's what the greatest gift, uh, one of the greatest gifts you've given me. Okay. Besides being beautiful <laughs> and giving me children. Here is, here's one of the greatest gifts. The greatest gift that my wife has given me to when it comes to the conversation of money is she rode my ass about it. No question about it. I was a driven human being, but my wife helped me see that dri- being driven for the money is not about being driven for the money. What I came to find over the years after that 2000 experience, almost 10 years ago, 2009 experience is the following, is that the reason why money matters and the reason why business matters and the reason why continuing to expand and grow matters is because money itself, as you get better and better at making it as a man inside of marriage, inside of that place, it forces you to become a new man. Like you cannot, I am not the same human being I was a year ago. I'm not the same human being I was 10 years ago for fucking guaranteed sake. And my money is a result of my ability to create and produce value in the marketplace. And so I produce more and I create more, not for the target of having money. We're well beyond that place of we need more money in order to take care of the family. That we're not even in that place. We've not been in that place for years. But where we are at, though, is for me and my wife is this desire to become more. And inside of that desire to become more, we use business as a way and money production as a way to accelerate that. You have any thoughts on that? I came to you. Um, no, I think that's good. I think that's, <laughs> I, I don't, I, I'm agreeing with you. Okay. We're going to wrap up this show. I think that people, when you experience abundance, I think that sometimes people look at you, they, I don't know really how to express this. Like I think people have a hard time accepting their abundance and at the same time I think people make excuses for those experiencing abundance because they don't have the courage to actually leap themselves and i think it's a reflection of them like being bugged that they don't take that leap for themselves yeah. so i would say like if you're listening to this and you're like being triggered or you're feeling like kind of i call it like a stab in the heart like something you, you need to take action in your, in your life do it there's a lot of you here 
who need to rise. All right, you're a man, you're listening to this. At every level. And you're a woman, you're listening to this. And you know as a couple that you need to rise. And Danielle and I work as a team to push each other. She pushes me, I push her. <laughs> There's times she wants to settle into her little comfortable cocoon, and then I kick her straight out of the cocoon. I rip the cocoon open, and I throw her out of the cliff. I think that in and my business- And she does the same thing to me. I think in my business, people will often say, like, oh, it's because you have Garrett. And I'm like, screw you, first off, because I work pretty hard to create you what did. I did. You did. But I also, like, acknowledge, like, yeah, he's helped me a lot. But I also think- I've helped you. Yeah. Like we, we you, this book doesn't exist if you don't exist. Well, and that's what's crazy. Like you help me produce more, but I help you like produce content. No, you and I help each <laughs> other produce more because yeah. we both push each other to become more. Right. It's not a conversation of making more money. At a certain level, you're going to make enough money to pay your bills, but at each level comes another question. Will we settle at this level? Right. I think that uh, like what I would say to close this show in is that you can produce way more as a couple if you can get on that same page of experiencing yes. more and growth. And you'll you'll go away. I realized like I think it was like two, three years ago that I realized like, OK, like when we were having struggles in our marriage and our relationship and I, I literally it was like I had this voice come to me that was like, you can move on and you can be married to somebody. But you two together will go way farther than you than you could alone. And so if you can take those experiences of who you are as a couple and you can you can make them work, two is better than one. Like you can, <laughs> at least in yeah. my experience for, for us, sure. like we push each other in that way. So so here is a challenge I have for you in this week's Date Your Wife podcast, which is this, is to have a conversation as a couple and allow yourself to collide and dream. You may be in a collision conversation, which is one of you has got to collide with your partner. You're either a man who is in a relationship with a woman who is okay with the status quo and doesn't want to grow, freaks out about any idea of you making a run for more. Or vice versa, you're a woman in a relationship with a man who is settled, settled down and sold out and you're pissed off and you need to collide. Or you're both the situation as a couple where you've gotten a very good situation economically, but you know that things are becoming stagnant. And inside of that, one of the keys to growth as a couple is to sit down and set a target of a game that you could create <laughs> together. Who can you become as a couple economically? Who can you become as a producer individually or collectively? And what would it require you to become to pull that off? Danielle and I sat and had this conversation. We literally, where we live, we had a, a, a vision of this five years ago. Our life that we have right now, we had a vision for this five years ago. And we started asking ourselves a question. The question was simple. Who would we individually have to become and who would we as a couple have to become? Because it wasn't too many years ago, we couldn't have done this podcast. Right. This podcast would not have worked. I think there was a lot of things in our relationship that we still had to work out. Whereas now I feel like when we get on this podcast and if you listen to some of our other shows, like we'll get in like this tension spot <laughs> where we're like literally like kind of bantering back and forth. Yeah, it's real but time. It, but yeah, but it's also like we're good who, with who we are as individuals and as a couple. And so we can kind of be like irritated and piss and laugh and have fun and, and let it go. Whereas like and if we would have tried to d done this show a couple years ago, we would have been spicy. It, I think I don't think it would have had the same effect. So. So give yourself some credit for where you are and also challenge yourself this week on your date night to have a conversation about possibility. Either it's going to be one of collision or it's going to be one of possibility. Either both, either one of these paths is going to lead you to a new position and a new possibility inside of your life. So we're going to wrap up this podcast. I thought you turned off the air conditioning because you're cold again. I, I, you obviously I don't know didn't turn it, it off. Be you at every level. Be, that's our message? That's my message. That's your message. Be you at every level. Anything else you want to add to that Except as we wrap you up the at show? Every level. You done? Yeah, I'm good. Anything else? You want to smile to the camera? Hi, guys. Hey, there you go. All right, we're going to bring conclusion to this show. I believe it's number 14. I don't know. Could be wrong. I think it's 13. You maybe it's cute. 15. I don't even know what it is. We're going to go out for the rest of our real date night. Thank you so much for being here this week with us. Also, if you are not getting access to the show notes, the tips, tricks, questions, and action guides to this show, you can always head to war uh, what the hell is this? No. Oh, dateyourwifenow.com. <laughs> and one and last reminder. And dkwstyling.com. And dkwstyling.com. I there. Okay, and dkwstyling.com if you want to check out some of Danielle's stuff. Also, right here, this book, Warrior Book, available at warriorbook.com. There's also a secondary book that comes with it. It's a prequel book called Be the Man, inspired by Danielle's preaching to me to be exactly that. She just kissed me on the neck. That is a sign to be done with this show. We are out of here. I am literally being pulled out of studio. This show is coming to conclusion. I hope you guys have a great week. We will talk to you next week as we move into the topic of parenting and the shit show that has become in raising our children as they are becoming preteens. 
See you guys next week.